Uh, welcome to the November LIA membership meeting. It's a little gloomy, gloomy out there today, but uh, other than that, the weather's not too bad. Uh, we got a fair number of things to do today, and uh, we've got uh, some, hopefully some new information to present here. We'll see how that goes. But at the end of the day, uh, we'll also uh, be reviewing elections and, and all that kind of stuff. But before we get started, I'd ask if you'd please join in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Okay, we're going to get right into this. So, Ted, you want to come up and go through the treasurer's report, please? I'll bet I'll be the shortest report today. Um, total income for the month was $135, or excuse me, $302. Total expense for the month was $9,526. That went backwards. But um, we still have that. Basically, that, that money was sent to Lake Restoration Committee for uh, work on Prairie Creek for the pumps and, and things like that. So it went right back. It's in the lake. But um, total checkbook balance right now $45,519. And we had the money at the foundation $8,092. So we're, we're ready for some more projects. Anybody have any questions? He got out of there pretty quick, didn't he? We'll we'll talk a little bit more about that nine thousand two hundred and fifty eight dollars, whatever it was here later today. So you understand what took place there and uh, how that all uh, went. So uh, so let's go with the next matter. Uh, board uh, reports, Mark. You want to come up? With? Thank you, Tim. Good morning. Uh, before I get started, uh, we ha we have two uh, committee uh, reports here. But before I start, to remember uh, last month, Tim and I were not at the meeting. I would like to thank the board, the executive board, uh, for uh, hosting that for for us, and especially Brian Morris. He took the lead on that. I think he did a very very good job. So we certainly appreciate that. So uh, right now, I'd like to have uh, Tom come up, and he's going to talk about the election committee, and then it's Tom. December is the election for the officers for 2018, and we have uh, all of the uh, officer positions to fill, plus four trustees this year. Uh, we end up with four because one of the trustees <coughs> is running for an officer position. So the officers that the election committee is putting forth will be President Nick Rents, Vice President Brian Morris, Secretary Eric Morris, Treasurer Ted Burke, Master at Arms Keith Westrich, uh, for Trustee Jeff Bossler, for Trustee Seth Bingham, for Trustee Brian Monroe, and there will be a one-year term to be filled as a result of the nomination of uh, Brian up to Vice President, and so that uh, nominee is Stu Wagner. Okay, the <clears throat> nominations are still open. Uh, you may make uh, nominations from the floor if you desire, and uh, the nominations will close at the end of this meeting. And again, the election will be in December. So if, uh, if anybody has any nominations at this time, hearing none, I again remind you that it's open till the end of the meeting, and uh, you can see me, uh, you know, to make a nomination before the end of the meeting. Thank you, Tom. Uh, enjoy coming and help us enjoy the party. It's fun. It's fun on this side. So. Anyways, uh, Tom will be back at the end of the meeting, so if anybody would like to run, please uh, get a hold of any one of the trustees or us, and uh, we'll get you on the ballot. Uh, the next one would be uh, Stan, would you mind coming up here, and we're going to talk about the uh, first uh, fundraiser we're having in, uh, in February. We'll be having our uh, dance once again out at uh, Romer's. It'll be on Saturday, February 24th. 
Uh, we have a similar but a little bit different type of band. They're different in that they're going to play a little bit longer than the band we had last year. Uh, the name is the Bishops. They're out of uh, Fort Wayne. They're a well-known band from that area. They do a lot of weddings and parties, corporate things and stuff like that. And uh, they play, you know, kind of a lot of the same music that uh, we traditionally hear. But they also play some newer stuff, you know, that new stuff from the 70s and 80s and 90s that I don't, that I don't know a lot about. <laughs> so, uh, but we'll be done, you know, we'll do the same format. We'll have the corporate tables once again. And we're always, as I mentioned the last time, we're looking for, uh, if anybody has any ideas on uh, door prizes, you know, uh, sports memorabilia or anything like that, or if you have condos or whatever, tickets that uh, would make door prizes, um, we're not beyond begging. So uh, February 24th, and we'll have more information. Uh, we'll be printing the tickets and getting out advertising very soon. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Stan. Uh, if uh, you ever went to that uh, dance, it, it's, it's a good thing to do in February when it's uh, 10 degrees below zero and you can wear shorts and we have sand and and uh, playing beach music. So it's not bad. And there's little vibrations there as well. You know, so uh, it is a good time. And, and Stan, thank you for uh, being committee chairman again on that. And uh, hopefully we'll have a, a very good outcome on that. So if any other questions, uh, Tim, that is the committee reports. Thanks, Mark. <clears throat> yeah, a couple things real quick before we uh, move, move forward here. I, I too would like to express my thanks for our board members at uh, our last meeting. Uh, unfortunately, we, Mark or either one of I was able to uh, make it. Uh, also, I think September, you all understand why that didn't take place. So. Uh, but, but again, uh, Brian and, and that whole group stepped up, and we do appreciate that. That was, uh, unfortunately, my short sight for not saying that. The other thing is, is uh, as, as all of you know, every year, or if you don't know, every year, we, we recognize an individual or individuals uh, as a uh, beacon for this water and this lake area down there. It's called the Guardian of the Lake Award. And what we do typically is look for individuals or individuals that have actually come forward and, and put forth an effort or support or have been engaged or involved in making this area better. Uh, we all know it's a huge effort on some of these things we're working on. Uh, we'll continue to work on them, but we don't do these without people's support. Huge amount of infrastructure it takes for, for volunteer people and just people in general to, to get this done. So we're at that time, and, and you know, all of, of all the things that I get to do, and sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad, this is probably, this is the best one. Because you're actually recognizing people for doing things and doing it well. Sometimes we don't get that recognition, I understand, and probably sometimes deserve, but this one is a good one. So I, I really enjoy doing this, so I, I'm going to get right into our, our winner this year. He's a local, uh, it's a gentleman, local gentleman. Uh, Looks uh, in Walpock. Actually, he's been around here forever. Uh, I should say that. He's been around here for a while. Uh, you'll see him on the lake. Uh, you'll see him in, in uh, some local establishments playing music. Uh, great guy. Has a great company. He's a fifth generation president of GA Winter and Son. He's always there whenever I've asked him for things or the LRC has asked him for things and things from anywhere from support to contacts to finance, all of those types of things. Never ever do you ask him to help support and he turns you down. And I, I'm not sure if he's here, he was going to show up today, but, but unfortunately he uh, probably couldn't make it. He's a busy guy, busy guy. Anyways, the Guardian of the Lake this year, and I hope you all will join me in, in, in recognizing him, is Gus Winsor from GA Winsor and Son here in Walpole. So let's give Gus a round of applause. <laughs> and Tom, I think, Tom Kanapi from the LRC, I think you would certainly second the fact that uh, this guy is, uh, he's a horse, he's a, he's a great person, and he's helped us out immensely. So. If you see Gus, tell him thank you for what he does. He's like, just a great guy. Okay, uh, Tom, I think. There we go. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Uh, 
Uh, Tom, you want to come up and uh, go over some of the issues we're working on in the LRC, please? Thanks, Tim. That's a good good selection of Gus. Gus has been very supportive of, of the project that I see in the LIA. It's a combination. He's, he's there to help. And he's helped us tremendously this past, past year with the water testing that we're doing on the lake at this time. A um, couple of things. There should be a letter at your table if you haven't. But Stephen, would you bring some of those around? And, uh, and then, and this letter was mailed out about two weeks ago to about 250 people. Stan, I appreciate that. That is, I guess that this letter was mailed out to about 250 people last week, 10 days ago, requesting uh, what we've done, uh, and also thanking them for us as well. And, and we try to capture as much as we can on one page. Now, it's kind of difficult to do if you go back and think about that for the last four years. So we did the best we could. But the critical point, the critical points on there, you go down to the fourth paragraph, and the ninth, are nine elements we're going to be working on this coming year in the five-year plan. And they're kind of repeated what we started back in 2011. If you look at the first one, the first one talks about the uh, transition of the big chick and little chick. We need to get that treatment training up and running. How soon? We don't know. But working on the design of that, we got to find a location. That's a big issue because the other three treatment trains now are uh, under construction or, or functioning properly. The other one was the rough face. We're continuing to look at that this year. Uh, the other big issue we're looking at is simply the biggest issue that we have to find funding for starting in January or February will be for the testing of those treatment trains again this coming year. Stephen is doing the testing right now. We're going to run those tests until the end of November with the weather like it's been. And at the end of November, we'll have the spring and summer, or if it's, it's spring and fall, I guess, Stephen, that we're going to have, I'll give you six months of what those treatment trains are doing as far as the water improvement. We'll publish that. We're going to report that to you. It's going to be a positive report. I can tell you that right now. I've seen the results occasionally that Stephen pulls in. But we've got to maintain that if we're going to move forward with this plan. And I know you can criticize the five-year. I've had some comments about that. But the five-year plan is a technical plan that we need to ask for federal and state monies. And if you look at this plan, it's going to, we estimate it. On, on, on that list, we, you can see the amount of money we're asking for in the millions of dollars. We've got a couple million set aside already for Chickasaw. We need that. And we're going to try to get more money from the Clean Water Fund. There's a number of areas we can get some of that money from. We're not expected locally. We're expecting from the federal state to help us with this project. But locally, we still need some money. How much? We don't know until we get some of these projects going. Tim smiles over there. And we got, <clears throat> he's going to talk about later this morning, about West Beach. And West Beach is a project that has legs. And I'll let you explain that one, Tim. That's going to need some dollars. Dredging, we've got to continue the dredging. Mr. Grable has been done doing well with that. We've got to continue that. We've got to continue to monitor the, uh, the rough pitch, as I said earlier. So we're asking for your donations, whatever amount you can. And like we've been meeting with some people, and they ask, what do you really need? We don't know until we get those projects initiated. And we'll come back to you with that. But so far, uh, the last 10 days, we've probably got close to 25 to 30 gifts in. Just people off the street. Highest gift we've had so far has been a thousand bucks. Uh, it goes down to about two dollars. Okay, and the amounts appreciated. And you look the card you have in front of you there. You can send that donation to the Mercer County Civic Foundation, or you can send it to the St. Mary's Community Foundation. We don't have a checkbook. I mean LRC. All checks go into those two accounts. And they also write all of our bills, so there's no funds going through Tom's or the Biles' hands, okay? So any amount that you feel like you can donate, we would accept that and appreciate it very much. It'll be put to good use. As we move these projects forward the next five years, we might come back to you and say, look, we need this for this project. And then we'll 
see, let's see what we can accomplish. We know we're going to need some local funds, okay? That's just where the matching process or the level of funding that takes place. So that's what we've done. <clears throat> uh, we're meeting with state officials as, as we speak each week, trying to continue the projects we have on the table. You're aware of them. The plan's been on the website of the LIA. Uh, Brian Morris, is Brian here? No. <coughs> He's done an excellent job of keeping it out there in front of people. So, any questions for me? Yes. I'll, I'll add a couple comments. One, Tom uh, didn't quite bring it up, but to get a lot of those federal and state monies, you sort of like have to have a project at least preliminary design. And then, you know, part of the money the LRC gets prepares some of those preliminary designs so that you can go forward and look for the money. Uh, part of the money preparing grants and stuff sometimes. <laughs> request money. You, you need some documentation. You need you know, paperwork. And so again, part of the money goes to that. That's just one of the smaller uses. The other is if you make a donation to the city foundations, it's tax deductible. So keep that in mind. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much, Tom. That it, Tom's right. Like, for example, the Beach Project, we're going to need some engineering costs to get that thing moving forward, okay? And that's going to have to come from us. And we got some funds already set aside for some of that, but we need the help for that project as we move forward. I appreciate your time. Thank you for your support. And I'll see you next month. If you have any questions, see me, okay? Thank you. <coughs> Thanks, Tom. inches with uh, one gate open there at West Bank, three inches. And last year this time, one of our big issues was, of course, lake level. So I've continued to track that just for my reference mainly, but I, I did see some interesting stuff. Um, so 2015, we had 44.93 inches of rain. This year, in 2017, we have 44.46 so far. Last year, we had a total of 25.61, was it? So I just thought that was kind of interesting. And another interesting thing I've seen when tracking it, so basically April, May, June, and July of 2017 were the only four months that we got more rain than we did in 2015. So, um, Last week, under last month, I'm sorry I wasn't here, I had some stuff I had to attend. Um, so I guess one of the questions that was brought up was the East Bank Gate and the West Bank Gate. So the East Bank Gate is open four inches, three to four inches, depending what time of year it is and what the lake level is. So currently, at that time, it was four inches, now it's down to three. Between both those gates, that equivalent is less than an inch a month that it draws the lake down. So, of course, the, uh, the three inches that the gates open on West Bank is to keep those fish from dying in that deep basin right there. If we don't, what happens is the, the fish that are in there consume the oxygen in the water and the dissolved oxygen level drops, absolutely plummets. And then a lot of the rough fish die off pretty quick. So that's the reason that that's open. The East Bank Gate, we keep that open because it needs water to the Miami area canal. So the main, you know, one of the, the biggest 
perks for the, the water in the canal, it's for the communities. So St. Mary's, Spencerville, Delphus, they all get water. It runs all the way up into Delphus, dumps out just north of Delphus. And one of the big things that they use it for is fire control. So I don't know if you remember about, I'm guessing somewhere between 12 and 15 years ago, in St. Mary's, a glass block, block caught on fire. That particular fire, at the time, the city officials told us that if it was not for the canal, they would have lost a huge section of downtown. They had three different fire companies pumping out of the canal. Uh, we were woke up at 2 o'clock in the morning to come open the gate from the lake to get more water down there. And then, for anyone that's aware of Spencer, or knows much about Spencerville, um, I think it was when I first started, so it had been like 99, 2000, sometime there. They had a big fire up there, and we now did the same effort. For, we did the same efforts for Spencerville as what we did in St. Mary's. So that's one of the big reasons. Plus, there's, there's a lot of natural resources in the canal, and to keep that watered is, it's, it's very, very important. If you look north of St. Mary's, between St. Mary's and Glenwood Road, there's a big section there. It has a lot of different white areas. So Harvey <coughs> Pond is one of them. But basically, when, when you go on the Google Earth and you start measuring that all, from north of St. Mary's out to Glenwood Road, it's roughly about 160 acres of wetland. Um, and then, you know, some of the water's two to three feet deep, too. So there's, there's quite a few fish in there as well. So I just wanted to let everybody know that. Um, now the East Bank Gate, I've had a lot of people tell me that we've got to be letting more water out than what, that, than what we say. Because it sounds a lot worse when you're standing on top of it. Well, the thing is, is when they design that to run through that lock chamber where the water comes out of the lake, there are concrete blocks that were poured into that concrete right there. And it hits those blocks and oxygenates that water. So that's why it sounds like that water's rushing so hard, is because of those concrete blocks. So off that and on to good news. So we had a very, very, very successful camping season this, this year. Our revenue's up about 12%. Um, special thanks to all of our camp hosts. They made a great season. We had about three really big events at the camp hosts. They, they pretty much plan it, run it, and keep all the people there at the campground under control and making people happy and doing what they can. And those are our um, garage sale weekend. So we open the campground up. All the campers can go ahead and have a garage sale. Camp hosts do that. Camp hosts do the Halloween camp out, and they also do the Fall Festival camp out. So all the money for bringing people in, um, stage, tent rental, all that stuff comes from our, from our camp hosts. And this year's Fall Festival was a huge success. It is the most well attended that I've seen here at Grand Lake. And I think a lot of it was to contribute to the weather. The past three years, it's either been cold, or rainy or cold and rainy. And this year it was actually very nice and we had a huge turnout. Um, the one that we were not expecting was two weekends ago, October 20th and 21st. The camp was at 95% capacity. So it just proves that if you've got the weather, people will show up regardless of what time of the year it is. Um, if we remove, uh, we remove the buoys on October 19th and 20th. If you have an adoptive buoy out there, go ahead and please bring it in. We don't want to lose them to ice and we don't want hunters shooting them either. <laughs> Some of the up and coming projects that we're hoping to get done this winter is finish the West Beach restroom remodel. Basically, we've got everything done but the dividers. And we've got to get, go ahead and get those installed. Um, grass seeding of the east and west bank. 
new LED lights at West Bank and Wendy Point restrooms, and then we'll also have like new toilet paper holders and new um, some new fixtures and stuff like that in there. And don't forget, it's time to pull your boats out if you haven't already. Go ahead and get them winterized properly and check your safety equipment so that way it's ready for next spring. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions? What about the swimming pool, Ray? Yes. So, thank you, Jim. That's the one I should have put on here, but I did. <laughs> so, we're getting a swimming pool in the campground. And I don't think there's anyone out there as excited as what I am. It's uh, it's going to be the exact same pool itself as what Indian Lake has. If you've seen Indian Lakes, uh, we are going to have a slide. And there are five 18-foot umbrellas. There'll be a concession stand in it. It's going to butt right up to the splash pad on the north side of the splash pad. They've actually got the pool dug in sides up is a stainless steel pool and the concrete for the floor poured already. So it's moving really, really, really quick. Um, we're hoping that it will be open and ready for use on Memorial Day weekend. And it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome in our campground. Um, and people that's probably my number one complaint. We want a place to go swimming. Splash pad's nice, it's great for little kids, but my teenage children and myself don't want to play in splash pad, so we've now got an avenue for there's something for them to do, and it's very, very, very exciting to me. Anything else? Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Tom, you got an update on Dredgen, where we're at? Very short. Where we're going? Very short. All right, that, that's perfect. Good job. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Coming to a conclusion of the 2017 dredge season, here in the next couple of weeks, we'll be spending our time getting the dredging back to our service area. Stowing away about 17,000 foot of pipe. So, uh, very, very, very successful year. Uh, as of right now, we probably won't get a whole lot more than what we got right now, but last year's record is 405,000, or 405,000. This year we're at 455,550. So, funny I went back through some of my spreadsheets here over the last couple of days and looked at them. Since 2012, we have incrementally gotten about 10% better every year which kind of scares me. You know, I'm looking at 455 to get that again. We're at 500 next year. Uh, something we're going to go for, you know, but you can't win a pennant. You can't win a Super Bowl every year, but we're going to try. We're going to try. So a couple things that's happened over the last couple uh, weeks. We did our stump removal program. So I want to thank uh, the Grand Lake Rec Club. I also want to thank the uh, U.S. Fish or Freshwater Boaters Alliance. They provide us with some GPS coordinates that we can go out and they're pretty much dead on. So, Mr. Uh, Fisher back there, you know, some of the things I heard with them, you know, how they were identifying some of these stumps by taking a rope, stretching it out, putting some weights on it, dragging it, and once our boat started coming together, that's where the stump was and they marked it. Is there any truth to that? Or? I can't take credit. I was not out there doing it. Was everybody else in our club? Oh, I better thank everybody uh, else in. Dave, Dave. Was one of them. Uh, Shai, and all these normal guys. But uh, did a fantastic, fantastic job. Yeah. We ended up removing, you know, and it was over a couple week period of time. They marked so many. We'd take our, our bars with our big excavator on it, remove them. They'd mark more, uh, the weather, weather kind of inhibited us on some of it because it ended up getting windy. Uh, but next year we'll do the same program. We plan on doing this from uh, year in, year out. But we removed 45 stumps, 61 logs, and you get on the LIA website and probably see some of these logs are huge. So, uh, and a ladder. We got a ladder out too. So. But uh, very successful program this year. So. 
we will continue doing that. And uh, Dave, did you have your hand up? Yes. Uh, we made four trips out on the lake, about three hours each trip. In total, we marked 110 marks on, on the lake. Stumps, logs, ladders, whatever. 110. And we only traveled. Well, that's kind of cool because I had these up and we come up with the uh, 106. Yeah. So we missed four somewhere. But their bottles are still out there. But, oh. And we only traveled between Bayview and Windy Point. So next year we're going to start at Windy Point and go the other direction. Hopefully. That's great. That's great. I appreciate all the help. Okay. Um, here next month, you know, I'm going to, like I said, our numbers aren't going to go up, up a whole lot, and I'm actually going to be hunting next month. I'm not sure when, if you have a month during December, January, but I do want to bring in our operators, uh, you know, whether it be February, yeah, we have and spend some time. You know, we got some new guys, uh, rock stars. we got a very, very, very good crew here at Grand Lake St. Mary. So I want to recognize them. So... Uh, Everybody can see their face, and uh, what I'll probably do is in February, March, I'll kind of lay out the plan here for next year on what jobs we're going to be doing, where we're going. Uh, but this winter, we'll spend time building DMRAs and uh, repairing our equipment. It's kind of beat up. So, any questions? No questions. Very good. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, I, I think we need to get, you know, Dan and, and his gang in here because we, we've said several times the last couple of years we haven't done it. We need to get that done. Those guys have done a heck of a job. Uh, pretty impressive, Tom, what you guys are doing. I, I know you're running up against that number. I get that, but it, just in terms of where we were at a few years back versus now, those guys have done an excellent job. We appreciate that. Dave, Brad, the USFB, uh, Boaters Alliance, all you guys, thanks for your help. I mean, it, it's again, it's team, it's people doing stuff. It's the way we're going to get some of this or a lot of this done around here. So we certainly appreciate what you guys do, and uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, we were going to do Ag Solutions next, but, but Teresa's not here today, Teresa Durson. Teresa recently had a, 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 had a baby in September. And uh, she's uh, not quite back up to speed at the office, so I told her we'll wait until uh, December. And then she can come in, a uh, girl, and she can come in and, uh, and enlighten us there about what she's got going on. She's got a lot of good stuff going on out there, so uh, we'll let her come in in December. And she can talk to you about that. Uh, what, what I'd like to do next is we're going to talk about Second Beach. You're all familiar with that. Uh, and I'm going to put up here is a concept drawing, and keep that in mind. Concept. We haven't done any engineering on this. We've got a lot of permitting to do on this, or some permitting, I should say. Uh, th this is just getting off the ground, and it has some legs, so uh, we're going to go down through this. But, but keep in mind, we're doing this for water quality. Okay. We're going to try to get that water quality in that beach at a level where uh, we may be able to get some recreational uh, use out of it. So that's the concept, but again, it's for water quality. So I, I just want to walk you through this. I had a pointer that I dropped this morning and broke, so forgive me. I think I can talk loud enough without the, without the uh, microphone, but first of all, as we all know today, this kind of stops right out here, and there's a little bit that comes off over there on the east, northeast quarter of Second Beach. What we're looking at doing, first of all, is we're going to dredge that. Tom, I think we said like 75,000 yep. cubic yards somewhere in that area, we think. Okay, so we're looking at potentially next year to get this dredged. Then we're looking at also adding some additional rock walls out here. It's a, it's a kind of a, they're going to pass each other, okay? Enough, it says 50 foot there, don't hold me to that, but we'll get enough width there so we can get a dredge or whatever we need in and out of that area. <coughs> and then we're looking at potentially, and again, uh, these are all just, we're still in the stages, digging maybe some silk traps along the outside <laughs> edges of that. I got you got it working? I did. I worked that awesome. Part. I busted. <laughs> what did you do? I can't start. Well, never mind, I don't want to die. 
So we're looking at doing this type of thing with rock. Again, uh, making some silk traps, however that all works out. And again, conceptual. So just stay with me. Once we get that done, um, well, but before we get to there, we got to go through the Army Corps of Engineers to do this. Okay? We just can't go out there and start dumping rock in the, in the lake. We actually have to get it from the Army Corps of Engineers. And in addition to that, we also got some engineering to do around this to make sure we put it out there because what we, what we would like to do is be able to access these areas, be able to walk them, so they're really smooth types of things. That's what we'd like to do. So that's where we're working towards. Again, you need Army Corps of Engineers buy-in, approval to do this. Uh, we'll have some, we've had some talks with some science people that can help us get that done. Now once you get this structure here, you get this in, you get your silt traps, then we're looking at what can we do for this area here. And we're looking at aeration, okay? Well again, conception. I know Joe's here, like to tell, we've had some conversations with him. What we think, what we think is we can kind of isolate this area here with air, we think, okay? We're pretty confident we can do that. If we can isolate that area, then we can aerate, after we bridge, we can aerate this area. And again, we're doing it for water quality. But if somebody can get in the water, that ain't all bad either. So uh, that's the concept. Um, what we, what we're, where we're at now is, you guys all remember Glenn Cobb used to be the park manager here, then he went up and became basically second in command at ODNR. Uh, Glenn retired. Glenn's back now working for uh, the director. We met with them three weeks ago, Tom, four weeks ago, and the three Department of Health Director. So we want to make sure that they're okay us doing this. Because obviously it's their lake that we are trying to get a, another area of the lake that we can get cleaned up. So in talking with the Director Zeringer, uh, Director of Health, uh, Glenn, as I said, Glenn was there, uh, and a few of us local guys and gals, Dr. Tom, I think, but all of us were Mr. Family. Anyway, we've got agreement to move forward with this. And, and that's what we're going to do. And Glenn is going to be the lead guy to help us get some of the contacts we need to make this happen. Now, timing, I don't know. You know, we'd love to have it next year. It's not going to happen. No, I think we would know that. But hopefully in the next next two years we can have this in a position of where we can have better quality water in this area. I think we all know, right here's the road that goes by there, and we all know what this looks like now. Got some weeds and duck crap, and it, it, it's, it's an eyesore, quite frankly. If we can get some of these cleaned up around here and actually get, and, and I don't want to make this sound like it's a, it's a, a swimming area, but it is. There's reason for that. <laughs> But at the end of the day, if we can get this cleaned up, get this aerated, and get agreement that that water's healthy, we can get people in there, fantastic. That's where we're headed. But it is for water quality. Okay? And then we can get to the point where we can put some boat docks in here, wherever we put them. Again, conceptual. People can drive up, walk over, jump in the water. I'm going to be the first to tell you this lake's going to be a while before we get it cleaned up. That's a big surprise. I'm sure everybody goes, oh, really? Okay? It's a big surprise, I understand that. But maybe we can chunk some of these areas off and actually start to have some impact with these. That's what we're looking at doing. On a smaller scale. And quite frankly, I think, and, and we've looked at it, I'm not going to throw any numbers, financial numbers, because we don't know right now. We're, we're doing the swag, the scientific wild guess. Uh, we're not there yet. We're going to need some engineering to have it done here. We're going to have to have some cost estimates and all this stuff. But it's going to take some money. It's going to take some money. Uh, I think you all know that, that next month we'll be, Mark and I will be stepping down. But these are some of the things that, that we're going to continue to work on, is this type of stuff. And again, with the, with the LIA's assistance, Nick and, and, the, and the board members, we're going to continue to work on these. And the other thing we're going to continue to work on, and, and probably put more of it in, is to see where we can get some money on the state and federal level. <coughs> Just take somebody to pursue that, somebody to go after it, go after it, and, and stay on them. Uh, I can be a little bit of a pain in the butt. These guys tell me, I don't know why, but uh, I, may, I may consider doing some of that. So at the end of the day, if 
we can get that open, get that viewpoint, a whole different landscape of you when you drive by there. What a win. What a win. So, uh, yeah, let's, let's have questions. You got a, got a question? Uh, that uh, dike around that, does that have like a walking trail on it? This right here? Right. Yeah, yeah, that's what we'd like to do is how, how wide is that open <coughs> there? Would that be feasible that the uh, possibly removable bridge on here that you can Right here? Yeah, we've had some removable. We, it, 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 again. Can you get it, Jeff? Again, with uh, with the understanding, we're in the conception stage here. We've talked about, I mean, we, we've kind of ran this really far, but we're trying to get back to, can we do that? Absolutely. It's all about time and money. Yeah. I mean, that's what it gets to. Right now, we just want to make sure, whether it's 50 feet, whatever the width is, we just want to make sure that the dredge crew would have access if we need to get back in there, or any other uh, ob &R type of stuff that they, they may have to do. You would probably get a lot more walkers on that. They can walk in a circle. Yeah, I'm saying. Yep. It's absolutely a good idea. In fact, I think we had conversations in the room that day about that. So, but it's, it's an excellent point. Again, time, function, time, and money. So, <coughs> yes, sir. Where is this located? Yeah. Is oh, I'm sorry. Where is West Bank of Bar okay. Street. Now, when, when you go down, uh, <laughs> you, you, know, you guys know where uh, Villanova's at? Has uh, everybody got a blue car like this one? Yeah, if you can look up, it's we're actually up in the northeast corner, the second beach down there. If you guys know where the, the uh, building is, where the I can't think of the name of the boat place is there. That's no, Freedom Marine, East Bank Marine, or whatever. Freedom Marine. Freedom Freedom Marine. Yeah, that's what I said. Freedom Marine. That's what. If you go. West of that, down the road there, you'll see that there's that first, what's it called, it's the first beach where the black top of stuff is. It's the next beach down. It's a huge beach. It's huge. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Did I call it West Bay? Yeah. That's right over here. Look at that one. East Bay. Okay. East Bay. Everybody take a deep breath. Okay, second beach on the northeast side of the lake. Call it what you want to call it. That's where it's at. That's what we're doing. Okay? Does everybody know where this is at then? We've got it. Okay. And again, that's a huge, huge beach. And used as a goose spot right there. This here? Yeah, some of that. Yeah, right to where this, this is actually a Google map, okay? And we kind of, this kind of comes down and gets smaller and smaller. Yeah, that does exist, and, and this does too, right here. Now we may have to do some stuff with that, I don't know yet. We'll figure that out once we get some engineers on it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. I mean, there's we're, we're looking at three or four or five now, but it's what we want to touch. Here's the issue. If we, if we turn this into a water quality project, we get the water where we want to get it at, then we're going to have to have some agreement with the high Department of Health that we can use this water. That's going to require testing. It's going to require that you can prove that you can do what we're saying here, all those types of things, okay? If we get it to the fact that we do recreation. Right now, it's water quality. We want to see if we can do we can do Windy Point, we can do down to St. Uh, Salina. I mean, there's a whole list of areas we can look at doing this. Because I'm going to tell you, as I told you that big secret earlier, this lake's probably not going to get cleaned up real quick. So if we can choke some of this stuff out, start getting places where we can actually physically use some of the lake, it makes sense. And, and quite frankly, from a PR standpoint, we've, we've got our crap beat out of it, as you all know. We try to keep back, but this, this would be huge to say, hey, We've actually got water usage. But again, it's from water to water. Anybody else have any other questions? Anything in general? Any questions? Yes, sir. There's two groups 
on this night that I want to recommend for next year's award that you're giving out today. They've never been recognized. Nick and I talked about this a while back. It's very simple. These two groups keep this lake the cleanest of anything. A, the seagulls, and the second runner-up is the turkey buzzards. Think about it. You got the, who's going to receive it? You going to receive it? We'll make, we'll make, we'll make a turn. Maybe we can put you in a seagull cut. We got a fish out of here. Just make a great big old concrete seagull and a turkey buzzard. Yeah, in two weeks it'll be white. Yeah. <laughs> Good point. Thanks. Anybody else got anything? If not, I'm going to. I'm sorry. Yes. We're working diligently with these treatment trains to clean up these creeks, but that's after we dump the sewage in from St. Henry Plant, Montezuma Plant, and Chickasaw Plant. There's actually. For a lot of you probably don't know, there is sewage comes from Eldor Park, New Weston, Burgessville. It's pumped underneath the Wabash River to the St. Henry sewage plant. And has, the water has to be run through the lake before it goes back to the Wabash. I think more emphasis should be put on cleaning that water up better. And maybe put your treatment trains there at the uh, sewage the plants where, where they dump it. That's, that's an environmental uh, regulated facility. What's the outfall number? On the water treatment plant. Well, well I, I grew up on Coldwater Creek and it didn't get real black until they started dumping St. Henry sewage in. So I think we have to go back to the source of the pollution instead of trying to clean up the water after it's polluted. It, and you're absolutely right, but we also need to, to, to realize and to understand that there's already stuff there that we're trying to clean up to keep from getting in the way. I don't disagree with what you're saying, but I think it's wrong. And we'll check on that. I, I'm not aware of that. I, I don't know. I haven't looked at the numbers there. So. Those, are, those are regulated facilities. They're NP or whatever you call them. National NPDS permitted facilities. So we can take a look. Anybody else? Okay, uh, Tom is going to come back up in uh, one more time, or last time for nomination. Okay, before I do that, I just want to remind you back to my earlier comments. Uh, the donations to the LRC partly uh, goes into doing all the preliminary engineering and getting the permits prepared and stuff to get the money. You know, to do a big project like that. So again, uh, your tax donation, tax deductible donation, would be appreciated, right, Tom? Yes. Yes. Okay. The election again is next month. At the end of this meeting, the nomination period will be closed. So do I have any nominations for any of the officer or trustee positions from the floor? Okay, hearing none, I now announce the nominations are closed. We will have the election next month. All right, Mark, we're safe. Perfect. No, thank you. Thank you very much. 50-50, uh, Jeff, you want to get somebody to draw the number? Yeah, we chucked in $55 today. We're going to give away $27.50. It's not quite like the whistle stop or whatever, but the last three digits of today's winner, three, four, eight. Three, four, eight. $27.50. Three, four, eight. Three, four, eight. I got it. She's got it right over here. And, and before we close the meeting, I, I, I got it. I got it. I see him walking in. <laughs> we, we talked earlier about the Guardian of the Lake Award winner, and uh, he just walked in. Uh, Gus Winsor. So, Gus, if you want to come up, I got a little plaque. I'd love to give it. Thank you. Said all 
good things about you, okay? If you look at our website tomorrow, you'll see the dates. Thank you very much, guys, for everything you do. We appreciate your support. We appreciate everything you do. And on behalf of the Lake Association, Lake Improvement Association, I'd like to present you with the Guardian of the Lake Award for 2017. Let's give it a round of applause. Good support from my family for this, so we all believe in the lake and uh, want to do everything we can to see it come back. Thank you very much. Okay, no further business questions. Uh, if that's the case, then this is uh, November's final closure. Mark and I have one more of these. We'll see you in December. Thank you.